Well, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry for the poor video quality t today. I was going to record out in the kitchen, um, but my daughter's dog is barking. And my mother-in-law came out and decided to start banging pans around for no apparent reason. So I'm in the bedroom, the inner sanctum network admin bedroom today, because uh, I didn't have a chance to make any um, videos this week at work. So I wanted to record one here at home. Um, so I thought I'd just do a brief recap of uh, one of my, uh, it was kind of giving me some some heartburn um, because I'm, I'm sorry, I hate VPNs. I hate setting them up. I hate messing with them. I hate changing them. I'm just not good at it. <laughs> I don't like them at all. Um, I'm a layer two, layer three guy through and through, but VPNs just baffle me. It's a, it's a mental block. Um, so that's a great thing to learn. If you guys want to learn something that's in high demand, it's any security stuff is just in high demand. So anyway, the request I got was, we have this VPN for a group called HRG, and I don't even know what HRG stands for, but they're just one of the groups we work with. It's another company. And uh, there's some printer that they come into a print, no, they come into a terminal server that we have in our DMZ and they need to print back out across the VPN to this printer that's over there where they are. So they they we have an always it's an IPsec tunnel IPsec tunnel between our business and theirs. They have people over there that remote desktop to our terminal server, and then they need to print back to a printer over there where they are. So that's what they needed me to set up is add, add another printer. So. Wonderful. I don't know anything about this. I didn't set it up. My boss set it up and uh, she's been really busy lately. So uh, uh, anyway, I, so I thought, you know what, I'll give it my best college try. I'll just dig in, see what I can figure out. So I'm not going to show you the actual firewall. Sorry, but I'll show you screenshots of uh, what I did and what I found. So let me share my screen. If I can find it again. There it is. Share screen. Share the whole dang screen. There we go. Now the uh, poor lighting is uh, is gone. <laughs> well, mostly. So here, let me pull this up. And whoops, it was maximized already. Sorry about that. Uh, let's make it as bigger as I can possibly make it without losing stuff. Okay. So the first thing I did was jump into. Uh, now, Panorama is a project or a product that we use to manage our firewalls. So we got four firewalls, two um, edge firewalls and two uh, segmentation firewalls. So the edge firewall, I guess, is what they call a north-south firewall. That's uh, internet. And basically any connection we have that goes outside of the hospital. And the segmentation firewall, it's what they call east-west firewall, and that just segments I mean, it monitors traffic going between VLANs, basically, actually between VRFs. And um, sorry, my wife texted me. She's at the DMV, poor thing. Um, so Panorama is the project product we use to manage that. Um, so first thing I did is jump into Panorama and, okay, HRG, let's look. I know it's a VPN tunnel. Let me look, see if I can find it. So I filtered on HRG. We have a bunch, we've got probably about 30 tunnels um, that go to other uh, places, anywhere from California Department of Corrections to, I don't know, Stryker, medical supply companies, all, all kinds of places. Uh, Quest, Quest Labs. Um, so I got on there and I just typed HRG and said, okay, show me what you got. So here, okay, so yep, we got this HRG tunnel. Um, that doesn't tell me much. So I clicked on this uh, proxy IDs. Now in the Cisco world, that would be like an ACL, um, the ACL you set up on your VPN. So I jumped in there and I said, okay, hey, somebody called this printer. So there's a printer at this address. Well, that's weird. That's not even routable. Okay. And we've got workstations, blah, blah. blah. Now I have redacted this local address and it's the same address in each case. It's the uh, IP address of our um, terminal server. 
So on each line, it's the same IP address. It's our terminal server. Because we're basically saying um, we're going to allow traffic between this subnet, which is actually just one address, this subnet, this subnet to that terminal server. So from here to that terminal server, from here to that terminal server. So it's like an access control list. They call it proxy IDs. I don't know why, they just do. Press the I believe button. So I saw this printer up here and said, okay, well, we're probably gonna have to add another one. Now, that's not one of my IP addresses and I know it's not one of his. So what the heck is that? So I said, all right, let me take a look at our NAT rules and see if maybe a NAT was set up for that printer or for that IP address. So I go over there and I, you know, go to policies and NAT and the rules. And sure enough, I see this one rule up here. Um, it's pointing to that IP address, that dot 100. And it's destination address is this, which is not on my network. So just put a, put a, put your finger on that for a minute. Cause it's like, that didn't make sense to me. Why do we have an ad address when that that's not even on my network? 172.30 is not one of my IPs. So anyway, I'm thinking, well, I don't know why that's the case, but I'm going to press the, I believe button. And I'm going to clone this rule and just change the IP addresses. Now, he had given me the new IP address of his printer. And uh, he had told me that, yeah, I am. I, he had set up a NAT for dot .100 to go to this his internal printer. And so he said, you just going to use the next one, dot .101? I said, yes, I am. And he said, OK, here's the other printer IP address. And I said, OK. So I was able to finish setting up this rule down here. You see highlighted in blue. So OK, fine. Then uh, now I know there's going to need to be, it's not enough just to set up this rule. We have to have a rule that actually allows the traffic. So then I came over here and, you know, again, filtered on HRG and said, what do we got? And we had like, I don't know, five or 10 rules. And, uh, but the only one where I could see that IP address, that done, dot one, dot 100 was in this HRG printer in and out rule. So I went ahead and I'll say, okay, well, I'm going to have to add that here. And for some reason, it was both source and destination, probably because pr tr printer traffic is bidirectional. So, okay, we added for source, added it for destination, and we're just allowing any, any traffic right now. So I think that was one of the things that whoever set this up said, we'll come back and fix that later. You know how that goes. So it's like, okay, well, I'm going to ignore that. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to add the new IP address to this rule. Okay, fine. Need to, that's, that's that. Now, what else do I need to do? Well, I need to, no, I don't want to go there yet. I need to go back here. I'm going to go all the way back up here to the top, back into this, uh, the IPSEC tunnel configuration. And the only thing that was there at that point was this printer and these workstation subnets. So I had to add the second printer. So I come down here and say, okay, I'm going to use the same IP here in this black part that's my terminal server. And that's going to be the local allowed address. And the remote allowed address is going to be this guy right here. So I added that printer. And I just made it another slash 32, just pointing at that one printer because there's no need to add a whole subnet. Because just, there's only two devices that we're, we're doing this for. So then I added that. I said, okay, that's all we need. Let's click commit. So I clicked commit. He, uh, the network admin at HRG at the other end, we were on a call with him. He committed. VPN tunnel came up. All right, awesome. And he's got a constant ping going. He goes, hmm, I can't ping it. I can ping the old printer, but I can't ping the new one. Hmm. Okay, so then I, I hop on this. IP that you can't see. I hop on the terminal server and I ping the old printer. Sure enough, I can ping it. Ping the new printer and I can't. What could possibly be wrong? And it's funny because it's something I always remind my boss about because she always forgets it. And this time she had to remind me about it because I forgot it this time. Um, since this is a slash 32, um, <laughs> this, this is the only route it knows about. 
I mean, it knows about these and it'll know about some others because these are slash 19, slash 21. But slash 32 means that's the only address on this subnet. So, so the, basically the firewall didn't know how to get there. So what I had to do, and I always forget that, and I always have to remind my boss this, I came in here to our uh, router config and look, look, look. Oh yeah, look, there's a, there's a route for that printer and it's pointing to tunnel 148. What's tunnel 148? It's the HRG tunnel. So we need to add a route for that printer pointing to this tunnel. So look there, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna click this and clone it. Boom, this, this guy showed up, HRG printer two. I put in the new IP, I put in the tunnel it's supposed to point to, clicked okay, committed it, committed the config to the firewalls. And before the firewall even came back and told me it was done, his ping started happening, my ping from the terminal server started happening and, and boom, we were done. So uh, that was that. That was the uh, that was the big thing that I was worried about. And this this whole process only took once we got him on the phone. It only took about fifteen minutes. And every time we work on a VPN tunnel, I mean every time, it seems like we're on a call for four hours minimum, trying to get things set up right. I guess since this this had already been set up and we weren't changing any security parameters, that things were fine. So. If you set up between Palo Alto and a Palo Alto firewall, it's a piece of cake. Palo Alto to Cisco, I, they just, they don't quite speak the same language. So, and plus Cisco's, Cisco setups are relatively straightforward and easy. Palo Alto, you have to go like over to this page and over to that page and here and then there. And, and just, I, I wish they would put it all in one place, to be honest. So instead of me having to go to five different pages to set up a VPN, uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. So sorry. All right. And then I thought I'd end up with a, kind of a humorous story. I don't I don't think I told this yet, but I hope I haven't. If I have and you've heard it, just click off. <laughs> if not, here we go. So one of the other projects I got going on is I am migrating uh, wireless APs from an old controller to a new controller. And it's been going marvelous. I mean, we haven't had any complaints at all um, until, I want to say, Tuesday. Actually, same day this happened. We got a call from Dr. Frank. And Dr. Frank is one of those guys that is, uh, he's been around a long time. He is an excellent doctor. Um, He's a nephrologist. He runs our uh, dialysis clinic. He is wonderful to the patients. He is he cares a lot about his patients, um, and he's a great guy. You talk to him; he's he's a super nice guy. But he is technologically challenged, um, and he gets frustrated easily. So, so, um. So I, I two days prior, I had just moved the dialysis clinic to the, the new controller, the wireless access points to the new controller. And uh, yeah, two days later, I get a call on my phone. He, he's supposed to call the help desk. They're not supposed to call me directly. Um, get a call on my phone. I saw it was him, so I didn't answer it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just get the voicemail. I'm not at my desk. Um, so he leaves a voicemail. Finally, you know, a little bit later, I... I listen to the voicemail. He says, this is Dr. Frank. I came in this morning and none of my wireless networks are available. Um, this this has never happened and this is unacceptable. And I might as well just tell all my patients to go home because I can't do any of my rounds today because I can't get on this stupid laptop. I need somebody to come over here right now. Click. Hang up. And that's how he is when he's frustrated. So I, I sat there and Hmm. So I get on my wireless controller and I check out the, the APs at the uh, di dialysis clinic. And there's clients. There's like 50 clients over there and I can ping them. Well, there's nothing wrong with wireless. Um, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Well, he finally did call the help desk. And so the help desk tried to help him. They weren't able to. So they, they got one of their people to say, hey, we're going to go over and take a look. And uh, I caught the guy and I said, um, I just checked wireless over there. Everything should be fine. Um, 
if you can't figure it out, you know, come get me and I'll see, we'll see what I can do to help you. And he says, okay, thanks. So he goes over there about 30 minutes later, he comes back and he's laughing. I said, well, how'd it go? And he goes, oh man, Dr. Frank. I said, so what was the problem? He goes, so I asked him to show me what the problem was. And I said, okay, show me what wireless network you're trying to connect to. So he goes down in there to where their wireless networks should be and opens up his network connection. See, there's nothing there. And Eric says, well, what kind of, what's the signal indicator look like? So, you know, down in the lower left corner, you got that little pizza pie slice looking thing that shows your wireless, whether you got wireless networks and what the signal strength is kind of, and it wasn't there. Huh. Instead, it was, there was this little airplane icon. So, so our intrepid help desk guy says, um, Dr. Frank, you've got this in airplane mode. Just click that and say, turn off airplane mode. And so he did, and boom, all his wireless networks were there. Dr. Frank's answer was, well, how did that happen? I didn't touch that. It, it had to have done it by itself. <laughs> the poor help desk guy goes, I, I don't know, Dr. Frank, but but uh, you should be good now. He said, if you ever see that looking like an airplane instead of a pizza slice, uh, just just click it and, and your, your wireless will turn right back on. So that was funny. He was about ready to call the C CEO of the hospital and complain about the IT department not providing network connectivity um, because he had put himself in airplane mode. That's Dr. Frank. God love him. God bless you, Dr. Frank. So anyway, when I started this video, I forgot to say grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. I'm sorry, I'm shaking the table. Um, and uh, I do mean that. I do hope you uh, get blessed by uh, our Lord's grace and peace this week. I know I've needed it a couple of times. I pray for grace and peace every day before I go to work. Um, and I, I, I pray for you guys too. People that ask me to, I say I'm going to pray for you. I pray for you. So uh, as always, keep those great comments coming. Keep the prayer requests coming in whatever shape or form you, you want to get them to me. Um, and as always, thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button. Uh, click the notification bell if you so desired. Heck, go crazy. Click the thumbs up button if you want. You can even click some thumbs down button. I don't care. I'm I'm confident enough. I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, that don't like me throwing religious content in here, but here's the thing. I don't care. Well, that's not very Christian. You know? Yeah, it is. I am a sinner. So, I mean, what can I tell you? We're sinner. Christians are sinners too. Um, so, yeah, I will always, always give God the glory. Soli Deo Gloria. To God alone be the glory, not me. I mean, legit, there are times when I can't solve a problem until I pray about it. And then the solution comes to me either in the form of an internet article or a flash of insight or somebody comes up and says, hey, what about that? And fixes the problem. That still all comes from God. So never discount God in helping you solve your problems. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for enduring all this. And uh, we'll catch you all next week. God bless. And let me stop this crazy thing. Where are you? There it is. Bye.